Hey guys, Jules here from T-Lixer. We are standing here in the beautiful forests of Warburton and today we're going to talk about Didau. Okay, so what the hell is Didau? So Didau is really a term that is not quite translatable to English, but it's a pinyin term in Chinese that means authentic source. Now, authentic source is referring to the environment in which it's grown, the way it's grown, and of course, the cultural history of how it's been grown and manufactured in that way for an extended period of time in China. Now, there's a bunch of companies out there that are talking about Didao as being um, the be all and end all, and we're here to talk about why that's true, but why that's not actually totally true. Um, so, to give you an idea of something that's from an authentic source, Think about it like this. A friend of mine recently went to Italy and she was extolling the virtues of tomatoes and how amazing they were when she had them in her pasta sauce and things like that. And we all love tomatoes, but we hear regularly that when you have tomatoes from like certain soils where they're grown and wild tomatoes are not actually from Italy, they're very similar to the areas where they actually are grown uh, in South America and Central America. So when you're having something that's taken out of its native environment, it's gonna have a totally different experience. It's gonna have a totally different effect. In fact, in the Materia Medica that was revised in uh, 695 AD, it was stated that any medicinal herb that was grown out of its native environment would be very, very similar in substance. As you know, a tomato in Italy looks very similar to a tomato that you would find here in Australia, but it would differ in its actual effect. And in this case, it's a gustatory thing, but when we're looking at the tonic herbs and the medicinal mushrooms, we're looking at something that's far, far deeper reaching in terms of its mineral profiles, of its beta-glucan levels, and also a kind of an X factor that you really get with the environment and the weather conditions and things like that. So we actually agree that detail is an amazing thing to uh, go towards, but here's where it starts to come into a little bit of a tricky under understanding that you need to get. First of all, in China, 80% of the herbs that are produced are produced Didao, and that suggests that these herbs are sacred to them, but also they want ones that have higher economic value. And if they're doing something that's been done for centuries and they realize it's got a better efficacy, they're gonna realize that that efficacy is based on something that's gonna have a higher economic value. So for a start, if there are companies out there saying that their Didao is a benchmark, I would caution uh, the consumer to consider the fact that 80% of herbs should be Didao. So really it's not a benchmark, it's a metric with which you should begin at, not where you should actually end at. Now, there's a couple of other things. First of all, there's no actual scientific verification in terms of the efficacy around Didao. It's really something that's cultural. And the other thing is because we've got an increase in pollution in the air, the soil, the environment, and all these other modern, modern things that are sort of happening, these are things that are basically starting to undermine. And even in China, they're reconsidering Didao as actually something to utilize ongoing. So here at t -Lixer, what we do is we are Didao and we, we definitely agree that you should be Didao, but because Didao is not a regulated system, we consider that we need to kind of go a bit beyond that. And so we in basically incorporate third party testing such as certified organic. And that's why we're certified organic as well. Because while our stuff is from a Didao in a pristine environment, it's also third party audited. So you know 100% that what you're getting is certified organic. 